but I guess the question that, that bothers me is that everybody wants to set up the African American narrative as if it's always a victim story, and it's not. It, it runs the gamut from being stories sometimes about victimization, overcoming victimization, or not even dealing with that history at all. So for Charles Johnson, who is one of my favorite writers, to kind of set up this essay as if focusing on an African American, focusing on what he calls the traditional black narrative uh, being problematic, I have issues with that. Uh, we have the right to uphold ourselves, critique ourselves, or turn our back on ourselves every once in a while. That's just being human. You don't always have this kind of boxing kind of feel. So I, I just think it's problematic. Uh, African American artists should permit new narratives to emerge from the ever shifting moments and circumstances. Better stories, new concepts, and new vocabularies. We've always done that. Is he saying that the uh, previous generations of writers didn't look for new concepts? That the Invisible Man wasn't a new way of writing a story, even though it was dealing with a narrative of what he called victimization. The way in which that book was written still voted one of the top books in American history was innovative in its, in its art. So be it victimization or non-victimization, at the end of the day, it's still about creating great art. And if you can create great art that moves people, be it about victimization or heroic living or, or, or anything else, I think it's important. I don't think, I don't think he had the right to kind of make that statement. As if uh, we have a tendency to think the new is better and to think to abandon uh, our historical foundation somehow makes us progressive, and it doesn't. Uh, oftentimes it makes us ignorant. It makes us think we're doing something new and we're doing something old and just rehashing it. Uh, and as an artist, I mean, there are times I create political art, there are times I create uh, art that's spiritual, there are times I create art that's meditative. It's across the board. No artist is locked into that. Some artists decide to be political artists only. Some artists decide to be uh, artists who are creating works based on fantasy only. But most artists, uh, I think, need the freedom to kind of travel between all those realms back and forth. Um, and he says out uh, here, um, based not on the past, but on the dangerous, exciting, and unexplored present. We, we were forced to do that on the slave ships. We, were, we, were, we did that in Africa when we looked up at the stars and created mythology. We created new concepts. He's assuming that we've never done that in this narrative. Or he's assuming that no African-American writer has never done that. Like we've never progressed. And I think that's his baggage. And I don't think he, he, can, he can project that baggage as a blanket statement and generalization on the African-American narrative. Then he says here, uh, she puts, like the mature Charles Johnson, many mature African-American visual artists have followed their own personal and widely varying inspirations to considerable success. And she names Richard Mayhew, Sam Gilliam, Martha, Jarvis Jackson, and Martin Furrier. However, the most widely recognized African-American artists were Mayor Bearden, Jacob Lawrence, and Elizabeth Kaplan are known for applying their exceptional talents to African-American themes, i.e. the black narrative. See, I don't think it's an either or, I think it's a both and. I uphold Martin Puryear to the same level as I uphold Elizabeth Catlett. Just because one focuses on the African American narrative doesn't make their art less than or less progressive. Just because one decides not to focus on the African American narrative does not make their work automatically more progressive. You know, it, it's, it's a silly comment in my opinion. And I mean, I strongly believe that great art is great art. No one questioned Rembrandt's art. The fact that he focused primarily on white Europeans didn't make his artwork less than, you know. The fact that all these major artists of the Renaissance and the Baroque period leading up to the works of today, uh, nobody questions whether a white artist focuses self solely on the, uh, the white figurative in his work, makes their work less than, they focus on the art itself. But for some reason, when people of color focus on themselves, the power structure wants to ghettoize them. African Americans who are uncomfortable in their own skin want to ghettoize them and say they need to do something other than be themselves. Is this um? Well, how how, how does how does this uh? Does this kind of coincide? This kind of philosophy or, or, or ideology in terms of like post-black? Is this the oh, same? Oh, definitely. This is a this is a byproduct, a toxic byproduct of post-black whatever that was. We had these arguments in the past. What is post-black? 
most of the artists who they consider post-black black progressives were artists who were exploiting the black narrative, not abandoning it. You know, who did they consider post-black? Carol Walker. I love her work, but it wasn't. What what did they consider post-black about it? You know, Sanford Biggers. What was post-black about it? And you know, one of his uh, installations was him showing home videos of himself growing up as a child juxtaposed to home videos of a, a white family growing up showing that we were similar. What was innovative about that? Showing that we were human beings is innovative. That's supposed to be some revelation to the world, that we're human beings. And the fact that we feel a need to prove that, I think is a really indicative of our state of mind, not anyone else's. I look at artists like Barclay Hendricks and what he did, how he painted the beautiful black body in a very progressive manner. But at the end of the day, it was great art. You know, I look at the argument that Raymond Saunders had with Ishmael Reed, uh, or his Raymond Saunders response to Ishmael Reed's article about black art and the black arts movement. That debate, you know, uh, Raymond Saunders wrote an essay called Black as a Color. I think it's a very insightful essay about not limiting African Americans artists' choices as artists, when a lot of times people were trying to do that. So I can understand both sides. Uh, like I said, I don't think it's an either or proposition. It's a yeah. both and. We're, we're and more people, most people are more complex than, than the politicians and the academics give them credit for being. Yeah. Hip hop is a perfect example. Half the samples came from white albums they loved, grooves they listened to. It had nothing to do with color. <laughs> so, that's my spirit. <laughs>